customers tell us they need a real operating system and they need it now. With OS 2, there's no waiting. But we better know how to sell OS 2. So we decided to take off and talk to some customers and some people who make their living out of selling OS 2. We came to Atlanta. And we couldn't resist New York. To really sell OS 2, we have to give users what they want. Now they tell us they want it to be fast, it's got to be easy to use, and it's got to be able to run all their existing software, and that's a lot to ask for, but OS 2 delivers. What would I be looking for in an operating system? Uh -huh. You go into the store, what is it that you're looking for out of the software you buy? I want it to be powerful, fast, and I want, I would like um, to be compatible with other programs I already use, easy internet access. You sell here on Wall Street, what do your customers want? Well, Dave, these guys here on Wall Street can't mess around. They need 32-bit performance, they need some heavy-duty multitasking, and it's really got to be easy to use, otherwise they're in trouble. Now, this is one of the very first things I'll show a new OS2 user, or maybe somebody that's considering OS2. Now, the new tutorial in OS2 version 3 allows me, as a Windows user, to learn things like OS2 basics. Well, if I'm into the tutorial, I can say, well, you know, this verbiage doesn't seem right to me. I click on the Windows icon and it says, oh, the OS2 desktop is similar to the Windows Program Manager. If I wanted to go into something like customizing, as I read the text, I say, hey, you know, I'd really like to do this. You click on Do It. OS2 will launch whatever program was referred to in the tutorial, bring it up on the screen, and I can actually do it hands-on. When I'm done, I go back to Return and go on with the tutorial. One of the greatest things in OS2 is the fact that you can put folders within folders because that's the way people operate in the real world. They don't operate in a program manager type way or a ugly mode C colon backslash. They have papers on their desktop. What is OS2's interface like to you? Interface. Explain that one to me. The icons on the screen. Oh, okay. The little pictures that tell me what I'm supposed to do. I just click on it and it opens up for me. Oh, that makes it very simple because I don't understand all the computer lingo and so I just know what either the little letters stand for or the, what the little icons are and that's very simple, very fast. I don't have to do a whole lot of, there doesn't have to be a whole lot of computer background for me to work this. Customers these days, they don't want to see the command line. They're not interested in C colon backslash. What they want to do is work in a more natural environment like they do in the office with printers and objects and icons. And that's why we created the Workplace Shell. Now, what is the Workplace Shell? It's this, the graphical user interface in front of OS 2. The Workplace Shell consists of a group of objects, simple things like this in this new version. When I open up a folder, notice that that folder actually opened. When I close it, the folder closes. It's cute, and it sells software. I use these objects very frequently. I want to put these objects on this new launch pad. And what the launch pad is for is keep a nice clean desktop. You know, there's always those objects that you use on a very frequent basis. Just drop it down there, take the other stuff and put it away. The launch pad also allows me to do other frequently used things like lock up the system. So when I want to go away and I want a password protection on the front end, bring up the Windows list. Window list shows me everything that happens to be running at the time. All of that's there. So the launch pad's nice and easy to use. If you want to get into the things that you can do to adjust the launch pad, click on it with the right mouse button. It has a pop-up menu. Another thing that I can do with the Workplace Shell, if I go ahead and select System Setup, here's a whole group of things used to customize the system. Example, if I want to open the font palette, I can take a font, drag and drop, and change the font, as simple as that. If I want to go into the color palette, I can select any color that I want from the group of colors here, drag and drop, and change the color. Every user can make their desktop however they wish. If they're a DOS user, a Windows user, or an OS2 user, it makes the user interface intuitive, easy to use, and if you compare it with the old program manager and file manager of Windows days, this is a hands-down winner. What we're trying to do is get the easy look, the easy feel, um, the easy use 
in the product, but also the high power to bring the future collaborative working on campus here right now. Yeah, that's exactly what the students need. So let me ask, I mean, if you look on the show floor, we've got GeoWorks Ensemble and we've got Microsoft Windows with the program manager and the file manager. Why would you steer a customer to the Workplace Shell in OS 2? Oh, the Workplace Shell in OS 2 is the most advanced um, shell that you can have. It's very easy to use and everything is treated as an object so that if a person sees their file on the screen they can just simply take that file and drag it drag it to the printer icon and it'll go start printing and so everything is very easy to use. Did you ever sell a customer one of these? They're easy to stick in the side of your computer but then you gotta configure the software and that's not so easy. Well, with OS 2 version 3, we have plug and play for PCM CIA. It makes configuring software for one of these a breeze. Plug and play for PCM CIA. And what this allows me to do is, anybody that's ever configured one of these, it's pretty difficult. I like to slip them into my laptop. That's easy. Configuring my software, far more difficult. With OS 2 version 3, here I've got a, a ThinkPad file. And what this is, is it looks like a hard file to my system. I plug it into my ThinkPad. My ThinkPad then launches the PCMCIA's plug and play, tells me that it's a hard disk. Well, it says that it's not ready. That's because I haven't accessed it yet. I double click on my D drive. It goes to the card, opens it, and now that it's open, you'll notice that it's a ready hard disk. So I can actually go and work with files there. If I wanted to go and fax one of those documents that's out there, well, wait a minute. I haven't installed my fax program. Well, from the Play at Will menu, I select Options, Register Object, and here's a list that says, when I plug in my modem, and let's go down to modem here, when I plug in my modem, I want a menu to come up and ask, do I want to start Faxworks OS 2, or do I want to start Sim for OS 2? These are both programs that I'll show you that come along with OS 2's bonus pack. Well, if I go ahead and select OK here, minimize this, well, actually, I can leave it in the screen, Plug in my modem. In this case, I'll plug it into the lower slot in my ThinkPad. I just identified the device as COM2. It brings up COM2 on the screen and asks me, which of these programs would I like to launch? Well, I'd actually like to launch my fax program now. I go ahead and select Launch, and it launches the fax works for OS2 that comes in the bonus pack. <laughs> Do you ever get a call from that customer that wants connection to the information superhighway? Well, the internet's full of information, but getting to it, well, that's quite another story. Well, with the OS2 Internet Advantage, the information superhighway, it's one button away. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that are in the bonus pack here, it includes a group of programs for connection to the internet, and that has to be the highlight of the entire bonus pack. This group of programs, IBM written, allow me to access the internet through SLIP. And a SLIP connection means I'm actually a user on the internet. I don't go and have the stuff come down to another machine and that machine send it to me. I'm an actual user out on the internet. Through using a SLIP connection, through the IBM OS2 Internet Advantage, we can give the users one button logon. Let me give you an example. If I select on-ramp registration, from there, customer assistance, I actually bring up a menu that explains what the advantage is. And within a matter of a couple of minutes, I'm a user on the internet. The internet's pretty much a fact of life now. How about if we take internet access and we put it right into OS2? One button internet access and one button internet sign on so that students can have access to the World Wide Web, students can have access to Usenet servers, all on that OS2 running in four megabyte of memory, all for the price of OS2. I, I don't think you can lose. I, simply because it, it allows people to get online immediately. Other things that are in the bonus pack, well, there's person to person. Person to person is an IBM developed piece of software which allows me to do teleconferencing right out of my PC. Other things that are packaged into the bonus pack, CompuServe Information Manager for OS2. Now, if you're familiar with CompuServe, it's a great system. For PC users like myself, it's the best system because it contains the most information for me, but the user interface is not the greatest. Well, the CompuServe Information Manager allows me to get graphically out on CompuServe 
and with a few clicks of an icon, I can be accessing information. Now, last but certainly not least, within the bonus pack for OS2 version 3 is Footprint Works. The Footprint Works collection contains database, word processor, spreadsheet, report writing facility, charting utility, and I don't mean little applets, full-blown 32-bit OS2 applications. They're multi-threaded, and they're also supportive of dynamic data exchange. Now, you're familiar, OS2 version 3 actually has the fax capabilities built right in. No, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it does. And, and it's got another thing called the Internet Connection, which means that you can do email to anybody in Discovery worldwide very quickly, all built into OS2. That's I wouldn't have to, like, this wouldn't come separately. This is all together, all this these little different things. All in the bonus pack for version 3. In fact, we come with a database, word processor, spreadsheet, all built in, all for the same price. That's great. The bonus pack for OS 2 version 3 secures the sale. What, what size machine do you run on now? Um, 486 DX2 chip. How much memory? Um, see, I only have four, and you need usually 12. You only OS2. have four. Well, guess what? This new version of OS 2 runs in four megabyte of memory. And that's what's great about OS2 version. That's version why I never 3. used OS2 at, in my home, because 4 wasn't enough for um, the OS2 2.1. And that's why we've made it exactly what we've done, is we've taken OS2 and we've shrunk its memory requirements. We didn't take anything away. It still runs all your DOS, Windows programs, but we've done it now in 4 megabyte of memory. And you're exactly the reason why, because there's so many of those 4 meg machines. Exactly. Well, I find that end users, when I tell them about that feature, are really pleased, because most of them don't have uh, a lot of memory. Uh, the price of memory has varied in recent years, but in, in general, it's still not cheap enough to justify more than four megs for most people. Well, if you're a typical, let's say you're a salesperson on the road and you have a laptop, a lot of laptops come with four megs, um, which is a typical installation. You can run OS2 version 3 on that with no problems. Um, you know, you can have multiple windows open, you can have, you could be downloading or contacting the home office while writing a letter to your customer. One of the greatest things about OS2 is it lets the computer do more than one thing at once. It's one thing to have more than one application at once, but it's another thing with the preemptive multitasking for the computer to have two applications that it's actually running side by side. So this almost sounds like uh, the way that you run your DOS programs and Windows programs, it almost sounds like multiple little computers. That's right. And, the, and OS2 has the crash protection. It's really like having five or six computers, or if you have a, a Pentium, like having eight or nine computers on your desktop. Because if something goes wrong with one of your DOS applications, you close it, it doesn't affect anything else running on your machine. Let's say you want to print a document and then you want to go and edit that document. That's the, that's the difference. That's why sometimes I tend to use OS2 as opposed to Windows. Oh, you have used OS2? Yes, too. OS2. That's, and that's one of the big it's reasons It's multitasking. Why. It definitely, um, OS2, you, you can multitask, do two or three jobs at one time, have one thing running a database, searching for certain things, one printing and then doing another task, as opposed to Windows. Um, once, you, once one thing started, you can't touch anything else, basically. What it, OS2 allows us to do is the operator has the same familiar user interface in, in front of them, which is the image of the form. But in the background, we can take the data from the, uh, the form or the image and transmit it in the background and route that document electronically without having to create a piece of paper and mail it. You need at least a 386 processor. You need at least four megabyte of memory but what about the hardware? What's it take advantage of? Well, I go into the system setup folder, bring up the selective install program. This lists the hardware that OS2 supports right out of the box. In fact, if we take a look here, here's my CD-ROM device support. Click on the CD-ROM icon, and it shows me all of the different CD-ROM drives that are supported. And notice, these are not all SCSI CD-ROM drives. If I want to look at the other audio devices that are supported, and video devices that are supported. Remember, out of the box, OS2 version 3 can record and playback audio and record and playback video. I don't really know much about computers. I just know that it works for me. I have a lot of different things I have to do, and this seems to allow me to go back and forth between different applications. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Anyway, it works.
They don't have to learn the command line. It's an object. You just drag it, drop it wherever they want. They don't have to learn file manager. They want to move a file to the floppy, they just drag it over and drop it in the floppy drive. Uh, hands down is the multitasking. Um, I'm tired of sitting there or waiting for the hourglass to do certain tasks. Because if I'm uh, downloading a file, I want to be able to switch to another program and, you know, be productive. An OS2 has the crash protection. It's really like having five or six computers, or if you have a, a Pentium, like having eight or nine computers on your desktop. Because if something goes wrong with one of your DOS applications, you close it, it doesn't affect anything else running on your machine. That's, the, I think, the fundamental difference in the operating system, because it does not require additional hardware. You don't have to go out and buy a bigger machine. You can use what you have and use it better than you did before. Bonus pack is summed up in one word, value. It's probably the single best value in software today. Now you've heard about OS2 version 3 with the entire bonus pack and all the internet connectivity. You're going to recommend it to customers? Yes! Well, there you have it, OS2 version 3. Everything you need today, no waiting. But now our competition, they're going to give you a product maybe in the middle of next year that's supposed to do what OS2 does now. Why wait for another product when I can have it right now? It won't do me any good next year. My, oh, I need something right now because my business is growing. This is the busiest time of year for me. I can't possibly wait 